Hello, everybody, and welcome. I'm Robert France, music director of your Windsor Symphony Orchestra, and this is the WSO at Home. To be specific, my home. Welcome to Boise, Idaho, and welcome to our kitchen. So tonight we have a special event for you at the WSO. This is called Cake and a Concert. Over the next 30 minutes, I am going to show you how to make the most delectable flourless chocolate cake. This is a recipe that comes from Christina. Her, uh, she has a restaurant in Sun Valley, Idaho. And uh, just a shout out to her. She's an amazing chef and she's got these incredible cookbooks. And so I was at her restaurant about eight years ago and found this and thought, okay, let me try to do that. I just want to say before we really get started, I'm not a chef, actually. I might play one on the internet, but I'm not actually a chef. But the deal is, is that this recipe is almost foolproof. So I've been making it for years. I use it. We make this a lot for our fundraisers uh, in Windsor. And what happens is that people will bid, uh, bid on me making one of these and delivering it to their house. So I've made about 40 or 50 or 60 of these over the years. So I'm getting there. So Tonight, I'm going to show you how to do that, but also I'm going to share with you the most amazing grouping of pieces from the archives of the Windsor Symphony Orchestra. So we're going to have a concert in 30 minutes from now, and then after that, we're going to have a question and answer period. I'll tell you all about it as we go along. I also want to give a special shout out to all those frontline workers who are out there working so hard on all of our behalf. We are so appreciative of all that you do, and I I think it's really tremendous that tonight we are being live streamed into all of the hospitals in the Windsor, Essex County area, including the temporary hospital, St. Clair College campus, which has some of our COVID-19 patients in it. So hello to all of you. I hope that you're feeling better every single day. And I hope that this cake makes you feel even better. So let's start the prep because I need to get the prep done so that I can get this cake done in 30 minutes. I've done a little bit of it before. First thing is oven, 350. That's what we bake this at. Generally, I like to double check and make sure that nothing's been left in the oven. My grandmother used to leave all sorts of things in the oven. Nope, we're good. It's empty. Second thing we have to do is prepare the springform pan. I don't know if you've ever used one of these before. If you have, then you probably know how difficult it can be. If you haven't, you probably have no idea why I'm going to struggle so much. Basically, what happens is this. The bottom pops out like this. And this... Uh, cake does not require any greasing of the pan, which is terrific, but it does require parchment paper to go on the bottom. So we put this over the bottom, sit this on top of it, and then here's the tricky part. So there's a little groove that it has to pop up into, and so you have to get it just right, I think I'm almost there, before you flip the little spring, and boom, it's in. I know what you're thinking. It's not super pretty. It's quite all right. I will trim the excess off, etc., etc., etc. And voila, springform pan, ready to go. Okay, so that's the first, that's the prep. Basically, there are three sections to this flourless chocolate cake. There is the melted chocolate, which I've pre-prepared. That's two cups of chocolate chips, a quarter of a cup of uh, espresso, which, by the way, is a doppio double espresso, and three tablespoons of butter. That's all been melting and it's prepared uh, for, for you in just a second. The other two components are the eggs. So what this recipe uses is six eggs, eggs that need to be split between the whites and the yolks. So I prepared five of them. I'm going to show you the sixth. Basically... Here we go, we're splitting, we're splitting, we're splitting. It's always so much fun to get that big, there we go, boom. Big glob of whites right down in there. This goes down into the garbage disposal, I'll wash the eggs off my hand. Always, 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 ladies and gentlemen, Clorox wipes just to clean up the eggs so we don't get salmonella poisoning. These are also great in the car when you come out of shopping center. I, my steering wheel has been cleaned so often on my car, I'm, I'm not sure there's any sort of thing left on the outside of it. Then this goes over here into our KitchenAid, and we whip them. So that's going to take just a few seconds. I'm going to tell you something. When I first started making this menu, this recipe years ago, 
I, I didn't have a KitchenAid. This came into my marriage. This is, this is where I got this KitchenAid. I used to whip these things by hand for an hour. It would take just to keep whipping with it. I don't know why. Second component or third component are the egg yolks. This is where we mix three quarters of a cup of sugar and hold please one tablespoon of vanilla not the teaspoon ah, the tablespoon there we go so this fills up like this boom vanilla it's yummy I have to tell you, by the way, if you've not had this chocolate cake before, it is really to die for. It's quite amazing. And if you go to our website and if you go to our Facebook page, you can actually get uh, connected up with Christina's of SunValley.com and order yourself one of these cookbooks. She is incredible. Okay, so this is now ready to be mixed as well. This I will use my hand mixer for, and I'm going to show you how this works. This goes down in. And as you see... The color starts to change as the vanilla and the granulated sugar and the egg yolks start to mix. There we go. Oh. Sorry, I got out of the shot there for a second, you guys. So, this is my first kitchen cooking class, by the way. Welcome to the premier one. So, that is now ready. So, I'm going to get this out. This comes apart actually in two little handy pieces. You just scrape off all the excess. Oh, wow. Thank you to my friends from St. Yoakum and Buffalo, New York. I used to live in Buffalo. I love Buffalo. All right. So this is going to go in here. We'll just rinse it really fast. And we've got our egg yolks. Time to check on the egg whites. Those egg whites are almost stiff. You are going to be amazed at how stiff these egg whites are, which means I'm going to take the chocolate off of the burner so, it's, so it cools down just a little bit because that's the next step. We're going to start folding here in a second. While that does that, I'm going to just make sure both chocolates are ready to go for you. Oh, yes. So, I am so excited about this. I don't want them to fall out because there's one that's loose, but those are some stiff egg whites, ladies and gentlemen. And we're back. Sorry about that. Live streaming. It's the news thing. So, when I left you, I had the three components. I have the melted chocolate. I have the egg yolks mixed with sugar and vanilla and the stiffened egg whites. Now the trick is to fold these in. I'm going to be completely honest with you. I had no idea what folding was before this recipe, so I thought YouTube it, look it up, discovered, ah, folding. I can do folding. The reason we fold is because if I just throw in the super warm chocolate into the eggs, it will turn this into a chocolate omelet. That's not what we're going for this evening. We're going for a chocolate tort, not a chocolate omelet. So I take a little scoop of our melted chocolate and slowly I start to fold it in. Now, this is a little bit of a process. So while I'm doing this, I am going to share with you a little bit about this evening's performance. First of all, this evening's performance comes from four different concerts that the WSO has played over the years. Uh, finishing the concert, I'll do it backwards. Finishing the concert will be two dances, one by Dvorak and one by Brahms. That came from a concert that we did oh, about three years ago on an all Dvorak concert. Before that, we're going to perform two pieces with Caitlin Warblow. Caitlin is the fiddler uh, on Broadway from the musical Come From Away. She came and did her first ever orchestra show with the Windsor Symphony Orchestra just last April. It's only been 13 months since she was with us. We're going to do two of her songs. Then in January, just uh, three months prior to today, uh, we performed um, Madam Butterfly live. And our Chocho-san was a soprano named uh, Taya Kasahara. 
Taya, an amazing soprano, um, you will get to hear Un Bel D. The first piece on the program is by a composer named Calixa Lavalle. Calixa Lavalle was a French composer, 19th century composer. Uh, he moved to Canada early in his life. He eventually moved to the United States where he fought in the U.S. Civil War. Then he moved back to Canada where he was an educator uh, and uh, a violinist and really a well-respected musician in Canada. And in fact, in 1880, if his name sounds familiar to you, it's because in 1880, he wrote and premiered O Canada, the National Anthem of Canada. So we are going to start with a piece of his called La Patrie, which means the, the homeland or the fatherland. And it is an overture that is jaunty and fun and has kind of a, almost a gallop kind of feel to it. It's really a terrific piece. By the way, these are looking, I haven't mentioned this in just a moment, but this is looking spectacular. In fact, with you at my side, this easily could be the best chocolate cake I've ever made. So this you'll see are the egg yolks and the chocolate kind of melted in to each other. Yes, and I tilt it to the camera without tilting it onto the, to the camera. We want it near the camera, but not on the camera. Now the fun part. Now I start to fold in the egg whites. Now here's where this gets interesting because as you see, you get sort of a clump of them and you start melting them in. And what happens is this chocolate gets kind of speckly. The truth is about this recipe is that in the end, this chocolate is going to be just a little bit on the speckly side. You don't want to mesh it in too much because you want the air to be in there so this doesn't become as dense as it could be. This is already a very dense cake. A uh, little goes a long way. Um, and so we, we just kind of carefully fold that in. While I fold that in, let me just share with you the next piece that's on the program. It is a marimba concerto. Now, for those of you who are thinking to yourself, marimba, is that like a big fancy xylophone? Bingo, it is. In fact, the marimba is so big. How big is it? It's probably wider than the counter space that I'm working on right now. And our performer was a, a marimbist named Jisoo Jung. Jisoo was a person that I met two years ago in Houston. Um, we have, I'm a um, Houston Symphony Associate Conductor, and every year we have a competition called the I'm a Hog Competition. Okay, let me just say this. I'm a did not have a sister named Yura. That is not how it works. I'm a Hog was actually her name. She uh, was born in the late 19th century, and her father actually, was the first Texan-born governor of the state of Texan, Texas, Governor Hogg, just in case that little bit of trivia comes in and uh, is important to you at some point. So um, Ima was a musician herself. She was a bit of a, an amateur pianist, a talented amateur pianist. And about 19, I think it was like 1917 or so, she decided that Houston needed its very own symphony orchestra. And so Ima was the person who started the Houston Symphony. So this competition is named after her. This competition is kind of interesting because a lot of times when you think of concerto competitions, you think of piano competitions or violin competitions, um, and then maybe the other instruments, because pianists and violinists have such incredible repertoire to draw on. But the Imaha competition is different in that all instruments are allowed to compete together. So you might have a piano, you might have a clarinet, you might have a marimba. So in 2018, Jisoo won the competition. Uh, with the concerto that she's about to play with the Windsor Symphony in just a few minutes. Uh, this concerto is written by a man named Emmanuel Sejourné. He was a marimba player as well. Truth be known, you really have to be pretty much a marimba player, I think, to write a really successful marimba concerto. It's such an incredibly complicated instrument to play, as you'll see, um, it, or at least it really helps to be able to do that. So this concerto itself has been is one of the most popular marimba concertos out there. It's been performed over 300 times around the world. After the concert, so she won the competition. She came back to Houston to do a concert with this concerto and me conducting. And after the concert backstage, I said, Jisoo, you have to come and visit us in Windsor and play this concerto. And immediately she said yes. So we planned it for March uh, 14th of this year. By the way, just a word or two about that concert. That was the last concert that the Windsor Symphony performed live. This was, as you probably remember, the same time that we were all just coming into awareness of COVID-19 and how it was going to affect our lives. On Friday, March 13th, I know Friday the 13th, right? Um, we were 
it became obvious to us overnight, actually, that we were not going to have an audience on Saturday the 14th, that things had changed dramatically. But all of our musicians were in town. So we got together, staff musicians, on the morning of the 13th, and we said, okay, we're all here. We've got this program ready. Shall we perform it and live stream it? And so in 36 hours, the musicians, the team all got together and, and we live streamed our concert on March 14th. It was really quite extraordinary. And in fact, another bit of trivia, we were the first orchestra to live stream a concert once COVID-19 had hit. Um, so that's what you're going to see tonight. It's The work itself is in two different movements. Uh, it starts off with a slow movement, actually, and then it has kind of a dance-like movement. And, and you'll see, Jisoo is just... She's an artist, both musically, she's an incredible person. She's, she's just, she's really a special person. And so I'm really happy that we're going to be able to present that to you. This, by the way, is looking very good. We are going to take it and we are going to now put it into our spring, spring form pan, like such. Yes, I'm going to show it to you. I wish this was Smell-O-Vision, smell a stream because... I'm going to tell you right now, this is some really good smelling chocolate. Now, maybe not, you know, I have met people who say to me, you know, I don't really like chocolate. And I will admit to you happily and readily, I have no idea what they're talking about when they say that. That makes no sense to me. This now kind of marbled, you'll see a little bit. It's got some white in it. You can kind of see. This is gonna go in the oven for 30 minutes. Let me set the timer here. And that's step one. Step two of the cake is what happens when it comes out. Now, because this is TV-ish, I pre-made the cake that we'll be eating tonight. <laughs> so this cake is already made. The second step to this is to drizzle chocolate over the top. Now, as you can see in the picture, Christina is really great about the whole drizzling of the chocolate with the raspberries. We're gonna do something a little bit different. What I did was I took a dark chocolate mint bar and I put it in a double boiler. By the way, a little bit of advice, I learned this the hard way. When you use a double boiler, make sure there's water in the lower pan. Otherwise, that lower pan will burn, just saying. So here we have the melted mint chocolate, chip, dark chocolate bar. There's a couple of tablespoons of vegetable oil in there as well because you want it to be really soupy because what happens next is that you start to drizzle it in this sort of Jackson Pollock kind of design on top of the cake. And you drizzle. As you're drizzling, by the way, I just want to say another shout out to some people who've really made our lives incredible in Windsor. The Masterworks the concerts that you will uh, be experiencing tonight are sponsored all by the Tepperman's. Bill and Rochelle Tepperman, uh, furniture company owners and just extraordinary patrons of the arts and extraordinary patrons of the Windsor Symphony for years and years and years are our sponsors for our Masterworks. And the concert that Caitlin Warblow is on is part of our Toldo Pops. And the Toldo family and the Toldo Foundation also have been amazing friends and supporters of the Windsor Symphony, not only in the past and in the present, but in the future. The Toldos have been a big part of our endowment campaign, and we are enormously grateful for them. By the way, just in case you're wondering, I think if it's not appeared already, that there will be right below me, not too long, a donate button. You may decide, wow, what the Windsor Symphony is doing is really super cool, and I'd like to be a part of that. We have a space for you at the Windsor Symphony. You could donate today. And if you're one of my American friends, every American dollar that you send in turns into a dollar thirty-three in Canadian money. That's a pretty good deal for all of us. So I've drizzled. Now what's going to happen is that this cake during the concert is going to go into the refrigerator so that that dark chocolate on the top can harden, and we will join you afterwards uh, with a piece of cake. So let me tell you a little bit about how the rest of the evening is going to unfold. First of all, um, this, 
This event this evening is part of the Windsor Symphony Orchestra's WSO at Home initiative. After March 14th and after our concert, what we realized was that everything had changed. Everything was going to be different from now on. And so we said to ourselves, all right, let's go back to our mission. And our mission at the Windsor Symphony Orchestra is simple, connect people through music. And we said, if we can't do it in real life, and boy, can I just say how much we miss you in real life and can't wait to see you again. But if we can't do that for the time being, what can we do? One of the things we can do is have this evening's performance, this encore performance of, of, of pieces from prior concerts at the Windsor Symphony. We are also, as I mentioned earlier, live streaming into the hospitals, and we're going to be creating a special video just for the hospitals, again, to thank those frontline workers and to help all those patients who are recovering from all sorts of ails, including COVID-19, uh, with a 30 to 40 minute uh, video that we're going to be looping of all of our musicians saying hello and playing music and doing what it is we love doing. In addition, we've started connecting, reconnecting with all of our younger audiences. And so our associate conductor, Daniel Wiley, has created listening clubs, and those are going to be available soon. And a number of us, this is one of my favorite parts of all of this, a number of us are reading children's books online. So if you're dying to hear and see me read Grumpy Monkey, which, by the way, literary genius, then uh, we've got a button for you. It's called WSO at Home on our homepage. Join us there, if you will. So we're going to go to the concert in just a moment. Before we do, I just want to tell you that coming out of the concert, we will have a little bit of time to spend together to answer any questions that you might have. My husband, Brandon Atkins, is going to be joining me, uh, first of all, because he loves this cake. Secondly, because he's going to be making some old fashions, which might I just say go very well with this cake. And thirdly, Brandon happens to be an epidemiologist, and he has been most recently uh, on TV, newspaper, and the radio here around the state of Idaho, helping people understand and deal with their questions about COVID-19. So during this performance, if you have questions about the soloist, about the pieces we're playing, about how to make a chocolate cake, although go easy on me, this is basically all of the information that I have for you. I'll share what I have, but it's not a lot. Or if you have questions about COVID-19, Brandon and I will do our best to answer them for you. So ladies and gentlemen, I present to you now your Windsor Symphony Orchestra. Enjoy the concert, everybody. <laughs> 